Hey, this is Ian from EssentialTennis.com. Welcome to this video lesson in which I'm going to show you my favorite toss drill to work on your toss consistency and placement on your serve, which is something a lot of tennis players struggle with. And this lesson I want to dedicate to, to uh, Paul Smith, who wrote to me on Facebook and said that he'd, he had watched my other drill to work on toss placement, but he was having trouble with his height. He was asking, what height should I toss and how can I practice being more consistent with my height? Well, there isn't one height that everybody should toss to because, first of all, the most obvious thing is we're all different heights. But a little less obvious than that is that we all have a little bit different rhythms with our service motion. Some players have a quick rhythm and they, they put the toss up and they immediately go into their motion. Other players have a little bit slower, smoother rhythm. They'll put the toss up and kind of take their time getting to their trophy pose before they finally go through their full motion. You know, pro example of somebody with a very quick rhythm is Dogopolov. Uh, he's the person that for me immediately comes to mind. It seems like he actually hits the ball with it still on the rise. So, for example, using him, uh, you know, his toss height is going to be much lower ultimately, than somebody who has a little bit longer, smoother motion, like Federer, who allows the ball to come down from the top of the toss. So, Paul, in short, there's no, like, I can't tell you it's seven foot eight inches and that's where the toss should be. Uh, it depends on your rhythm and on your height. But here's a drill that you can work on that. And what I suggest you do is find a, a wall or any kind of surface that you can use for this purpose. And it doesn't have to be on a tennis court, it can be anywhere. And what I want you to do is go stand up next to the wall, reach up and fully extend with your racket next to it. And then you're gonna pick out a spot, typically about eight to 12 inches above the tip of your racket at full extension. So you'll see here that I just have a piece of tape up on the curtain and it's about a foot or so above the, uh, the tip of my racket. And for me, that's gonna be where I want the height of my toss to be most of the time, to get a nice, smooth, relaxed rhythm. I don't have a very rushed, you know, quick motion. I have a much more deliberate, smooth, kind of relaxed motion. It's not, it's not more rushed like a, a doga pull-off uh, would be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna approach the wall, pretending that basically the wall is the baseline here, running this way, and if I were to actually hit a serve, I'd be hitting the serve this way into the wall. I'm not going to hit any serves. I'm just practicing my toss though. So I'm going to come up to the wall, line myself up so that where my release point is, is right below where that piece of tape is. And at first I'm just going to practice, I'm just going to leave my racket at my side and I'm just going to practice putting the ball up. And my goal here is to try to find a consistent height with that toss. And I want it to more or less line up <laughs> with that piece of tape. And I, I love this type of drill because it gives you immediate feedback. You saw my very first one was, was pretty low. Two ago, I was off to the left and I'm just simply practicing my ability to be consistent with the placement of my toss. And as you do this, you're gonna find that the more that you use your shoulder to guide the ball up into the air, the more consistent you're going to be. If you use the smaller parts of your body like your wrist, your elbow, your hand, to kind of flip the ball up in the air and you have a very short, abrupt uh, tossing motion, you'll find that it's very difficult to be consistent. So really you just want to have one hinge point, your shoulder, and just guide and lift the ball up to where you want it to go. Progression number two would be starting in that, that same position and now actually go back into your, your trophy pose. So if you have a, a platform stance, you would just leave your feet where they are, go back to your trophy pose and practice getting the ball to that right height and position. Now, if you have a pinpoint, pinpoint stance or you have a, a hybrid, you'd obviously put, uh, bring your feet together and just go to your, your trophy pose while practicing getting the ball to the right spot. And this is again, great feedback. If you tend to toss too high, then you're gonna, you're gonna see that pattern very quickly. If you tend to toss too low and you find yourself rushed a lot in your motion, you're gonna find that out very quickly. 
And the, really the last thing that I'll say is, you know, this is not the be all end all. There's, a, there's other variables here. There's different styles of toss. Some players have a little bit of arc in their toss. Others will toss more straight up and down. So um, I, don't mean this, I don't mean for this drill to be like the way that you should toss. I've demonstrated this in a very straight up and down fashion. If you have a little bit of arc to your toss, that's totally fine as well. The key here is that you're using that mark on the wall or that tape as a reference point and you're gaining consistency in how your toss travels. The height that it travels to, the direction that it travels, and you want it to be as consistent as possible. However, ultimately that happens to be relative to the piece of tape. Uh, so hopefully that makes sense. Paul, thank you so much for the great suggestion for uh, today's lesson. I really appreciate it very much. If you're watching on YouTube today and you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and click like. Also subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss out on any future lessons. With that, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time and your attention and I'll be talking to you again very soon.